Welcome to Mining the Gold. Scripture's truths are like nuggets of gold in a reserve. To be its best, gold must be mined, refined, and designed as bullion, coins, jewelry, and the like. To get the best from the truths of God's word, they too must be mined, refined, and designed. Mined as we apply them to everyday situations refined as we recognize those biblical precepts that carry more weight than our cultural preferences and designed for us as family members, neighbors, members of the community at large as we forge the relationship we get to enjoy with our God. I'm Denise Watts, author of Mining the Gold and your teaching host for today's session. And I am Marion Boyd II. I am the owner of Explore, See the World Travel Agency. And it is a pleasure to be with you today. Oh, Marion, thank you for being with us. And I am excited to share with our viewers the things that you're going to share with us today. To our viewers, we thank you for investing these moments with us as we look together for the gold in God's word. Today's lesson comes from chapter 10 of Mining the Gold, Your Identity in Christ. This is topic three. In Christ, you are blessed. Our scripture comes from Ephesians 1, 3. We're using the New International Version, which reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. How many times have you heard it or even said it? Have a blessed day. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Have those words prompted you to ask, what does it mean to be blessed? How will I know that I have indeed had a blessed day? We tend to equate blessed with getting something tangible, something we can see or touch, with getting some amount of money or something that it takes money to buy. Is that what blessing involves? Is that all that blessing involves? Or is there more? In Genesis 1, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. This first blessing gives the clear impression that to be blessed is to have more, specifically more offspring. But this blessing is to the fish, sea creatures, and birds. The blessing shifts a bit when God addresses humans in Genesis 1, 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Did you catch the change? Not only does the blessing include offspring, it also includes authority over the earth and its creatures. Other types of biblical blessings include 
blessing of the Sabbath as a holy day of rest in Genesis 2-3. Or well, the blessing of Abraham with great wealth in Genesis 24-35. Or the blessing of abundant crops in Genesis 29-12. Finally, there is the blessing of status over other nations and siblings in Genesis 27, 28 through 30. Blessings are both words and actions. You can speak the desire for someone to be the recipient of wealth, status, offspring, and authority. And you may also give gifts that contribute to the wealth, status, or authority of another. Paul's words of blessing to the Ephesians speak of a special category of blessings that we do not want to overlook, spiritual blessings. The holiness of Sabbath rest is definitely a spiritual blessing. The world around us moves at a pace that allows for no resting. Businesses are now 24 seven, meaning that any day is potentially a work day. It is only by the influence of biblical faith that the idea of a regularly scheduled societal day off is found. As the United States has strayed from her biblical heritage, we have lost Sabbath rest. This blessing is still ours to claim if we are willing to do so. More spiritual blessings are pronounced in Numbers 6, 23 to 26, where God says, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God wants his people to know the blessings of his sustenance, favor, grace, and peace. Jesus offers blessings to his followers in Matthew 5, 3 through 12. The New Testament word for blessed is also translated as happy. It's official that blessings are things to make you happy. So look at what Jesus places in that category and why. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Christ's blessings cover you in those situations we tend to see as less than favorable. We also have the blessing of the fruit of the spirit. 
Galatians 5, 22 and 23 describes it as a singular fruit with multiple manifestations. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The fruit is in everyone who has received the new birth, enabling you to live a life that is above all law. The last cluster of spiritual blessings I'll share are spiritual gifts. There are lists of spiritual gifts in Paul's writings, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. God wants his church operating in power beyond the individual strengths of the people. Spiritual gifts allow his work to be accomplished by his power among his people that he might be revealed to the world through us. In Christ, you have these spiritual blessings as well as all blessings of scripture. When you say or hear, have a blessed day or be blessed or be a blessing, remember, and find ways to communicate some of the specifics of what those blessings might be. May you ever be blessed with the realization that in Christ, even on your worst days, you can be happy for you still have the promise of the presence, the power, and the peace of our Lord. That's today's mining of the gold of God's word. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that that lesson is extremely rich. And there are two things that just jumped off the page at me. And so I want to recap them for you. The first one was the statement that read, when you say or hear, have a blessed day or be blessed or be a blessing, remember, listen to that word, remember and find ways to communicate some of the specifics of what those blessings might be. And that stands out to me uh, specifically because a lot of times we give people a short answer when they ask us how we're doing. And sometimes in conversations with people and I ask them, how are you doing? They'd be like, oh, I'm blessed. And I'll say, yes, you are. But now I think I'm going to ask them to explain or communicate. Can you tell me why you say you're blessed? What is it that you have recognized that is operating in your life to remind you of this blessing that is upon your life? I think that is so good that we communicate the blessing to others. Yes. That's one. And then the second point that stood out to me was when you talked about the fact that you still have the promise of the presence, the power and the peace of our Lord. So think about that. You have God's presence, God's power, and God's peace. If that ain't a blessing, I'm trying to tell you, then I don't know what blessing is. And so remembering that wherever you go, like she said, regardless of how trying or how difficult or how challenging your day may be, scripture says he will never leave us nor forsake us, meaning his presence is always with us. And he has given us his power. And he says, Jesus said this, he said, my peace I leave with you. 
We have his presence. We have his power and we have his peace. We have abundant blessing and in specific and in context with this conversation, spiritual blessings. Like the scripture says that he hath blessed us with spiritual bless, every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing, which means we're not lacking any spiritual blessings. Ain't that amazing? And if we would walk with that presence of mind in our day-to-day -day lives and interactions, I think we would have many, many better days, even though they may be tough. I think it's great to remember and it's great to communicate because it's, the presence it, and the peace of our Lord is with you. Yes. You know, I have this way, and you know it because you prompted it today as we signed in. I have this way when someone asks me how I'm doing, I say I'm way better than I deserve because of this. When, yes. when I look at what blessed is, oh my gosh, I'm way better. All that I have in terms of, of his, it is capsulated with the presence, the power, and the peace of Christ, no matter what. Even though what I deserve is absolute absence from Christ, powerlessness in Christ, and complete chaos in my spirit. That's what I deserve because I'm always walking that? away from him. But instead, he gives this to me. And, and what I found with that, that, oh, let's just use the day that uh, I drove up to the house and the front door was standing open behind the storm door. At least there was a storm door, but the front door was standing open. Now, I live alone, I should mention. <laughs> and when I got to try to open the garage door, the garage door would not open. That's not a good combination. It's really not, okay. <laughs> you know? And it just turned out, well, the front door was just open because since the storm door is locked, the wind blows it open every now and then if I don't close it all the way. And it had blown open. The garage door, however, would not open because the spring of the garage door had broken. And when I called the garage door company, they told me it would be 10 days before they could come fix that spring, which meant that for the next 10 days, the car was going to have to sit out in the driveway. And, you know, we want to complain, right? So what's yeah, the do. complaint here? Well, I drove up and my front door was unlocked, <clears throat> uh, was open. Uh, dear, you have a front door. It's a blessing. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> I pushed my garage door open and the garage door wouldn't open. Guess what? You have a garage. The spring was broken and it would be 10 days before they could open my garage door for me. Well, guess what? The car's on the outside. You don't need the garage for the next 10 days. You can, you see, so when you think about way better than I deserve, you can realize that every so-called problem resides within a blessing. I don't have to have a house. It doesn't have to have a garage, right? So just by saying, I'm way better than I deserve. When I'm tempted to complain about things like that or anything that goes, what I call goes awry in my life, I'm able to realize, but I'm way better than I deserve. Because I have all these blessings that have resulted in these problems. We're blessed. We are blessed. And to have a Christ who saves us when he would be perfectly justified in condemning us for all eternity 
Oh, that is a blessing beyond measure. Yes. While we were yet sinners, he made the decision. Yes, indeed. Ah. Oh, my goodness. That and is a that, blessing in and of itself. That is a blessing of itself. And that's just one way of mining the gold of God's word. To read scriptures, and this was longer than usual scriptures, there's so much. To read scriptures, think about them, think about what they said to those people, and then realize what they're saying to us today. That's mining the gold of God's word. But there is another mining of the gold that we're going to get to do today. That's called mining the gold of creativity that God places within each one of us so that as we are living in this life, giving all we have to God, mining that gold that he placed within us, we actually find that we are able to add value to other people and help them to see that this life can be better and more beautiful than it normally would be perceived as being. And with that thought in mind, I am so pleased today to introduce to you a friend and brother in Christ, a fellow Maxwell leadership coach, Marion Boyd, who's going to share the gold God has given to him. Now, Marion, welcome to Mining the Gold. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I am honored by this invitation, and it is a delight to be here. Blessings to everyone that will hear or see this podcast, for you are blessed. And I'd like to share one of the things that I'm able to bless others with, and it is helping them to see a little bit more of God's creation in their leisure or leisure time. As a travel agent, I'm able to help people to travel with their family and friends, to spend quality time together, to see some of the places that they have on their want to see list or their bucket list. And it is such a delight to see some of the pictures and the videos that they share with me uh, while they're on their vacation. We live in such a wonderful world. And as Denise said in the lesson here, especially in the United States, it's 24 seven. People are always on the go. They are they're checking their email and all kinds of things, even when they're supposed to be off work. And so for them to have a chance to get away and to go to places like Turks and Caicos or Puerto Rico or Australia and see some of the things that people are doing around the world and to taste some of the food. Oh my goodness. Anybody like food but me? To taste oh, some yeah. of the food. <laughs> it is just so wonderful to be able to help other people to do those things. And so that's one of the things that God has enabled me to do, to be a blessing to others and help them to fulfill some of their travel and destination needs. Thank you. Well, that I like that. I mean, you know, we travel on Maxwell. So is this a brick and mortar situation? Do you have an office that people come to you? Do you have a website? How, how do you serve people as a travel agent? Okay, so as a travel agent, I work from home. So this is my, this is my office. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my office. Uh, you're able to do everything online. I, I prefer, this is just me. I prefer to work directly with my, my clients. However, you can go to uh, my webpage and you can book your own trip. You don't have to call me for nothing. You can book a try, uh, uh, excuse me. You can book a flight. You could book a hotel, you could book a rental car, and you don't have to call me. However, I prefer to work directly with my clients. That's just me. But some people don't, they, they don't want to, I'd be like, I can do all that myself. I said, okay, fine, try it out. And so I get, I, 
I believe in customer service. And I believe that you get you should get more than what you ask for. Mm -hmm. I think we can learn that from Earl Nightingale. Do more than what they ask for. Do more than what they expect. And so that that's what I try to do. I am working with a client now who wants to go uh, with her family to Florida. And she has some ideas of where she wants to go and what she wants to do. She has two children and a husband. And so I'm working to get that all together. And then she wants to go on a trip with just her husband and her to an all-exclusive resort in, in Turks and Caicos. And so I'm working on that. And it's just exciting to be able to put those things together uh, or to help people book a, a family cruise. We can do that. We do. I do all things travel. If you're trying to go to the Super Bowl, we can do that. If you're trying to go to Taylor Swift concert, we can do that. All things travel, I can help you with. And I'd be glad to. That is a big convenience. I think the world's, the way things are now, things get confusing. And you can think you're booking tickets that, you know, if, a simple thing like tickets. You think you're book, booking front row center only to get there and find out that you're front row center of the third balcony. <laughs> because the the diagrams are confusing. Right. It is important to have that customer service factor. Now, let me tell you an additional blessing. So I want everybody just to lean in just a little bit more right here. Now, imagine... You are booking a trip for you and your loved ones by yourself. And you are doing all of these things. I got my discount. I pay my money and I'm going on my trip. And when you get there, things aren't the way you expected them to be based on that paperwork. Well, guess who got to hash all that out? You. And sometimes you can't fix it because they're going to be like, did you see this in the little print? And so when you have a travel agent, and I've had this happen, they'll get to the registration desk and they'll be like, Rian, we're down here and, and, and things aren't right. And guess who fixes it? And guess who makes sure you get what you paid for and then some? It is really, really good to have a travel agent because you spend too much money, too much of your hard-earned money to try to be arguing and fussing and acting a fool. You know what happened to that lady when she went to Dubai and they locked her behind up? Have you a travel agent? That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of jail free. Get a travel agent. <laughs> ah, get a travel agent. Yes. <laughs> That's you on vacation and I'm working for you. Fair and yeah, I'm on vacation. Let me, let me call my travel agent. The person I paid to help me get this trip. Yeah. Do that. Makes sense. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Well, before yeah. we go, just what's your favorite travel destination and why? Well, okay. I'm I'm a country boy. My favorite travel destination is Charlotte, North Carolina. And the reason why I say that is because it is a true place for me to get away like to get off the grid i go down there it's so peaceful it's so calming i have a place to run i'm a runner i have a place to write i'm a writer i have a place where i can just shut off everything and get away from the world and just enjoy myself so i'm not extravagant i don't have to go to egypt or dubai i'm going but i don't have to go there in order to find a place where I can be at peace. Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll hop on the train and be there in a few hours. That is my favorite travel destination. I actually have family in Charlotte. Do you? And so every time we go to our training, I go there and pick up a family member and then the two of us drive on to training together. Okay. And so I have been impressed that Charlotte is quite the city. But it doesn't feel, once you get out of traffic, like the city. 
say that again. So, so I went, I went to school in Atlanta. I went to college. I went to Morehouse College, and I was shocked to find out that the population of Charlotte is greater than the population of Atlanta. I was shocked to find that out. Yeah. Yes, I, I wouldn't shocked. think that. Yeah, but that traffic in Charlotte, you ain't no joke. I ain't. You're you right about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy your next opportunity to get into Charlotte and enjoy that peace and quiet. And I shall. And my friend, if you are watching and the thought of peace and quiet raised within you something you had not thought about being raised in a long time, then perhaps you need to contact Marion. And we're going to show you just how Mining the Gold podcast is posted on Facebook and YouTube each Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. That's Eastern time or New York time if you're outside of the United States. We are thankful that you are watching, but we also ask you to like or follow us on Facebook for notification when it's posted or subscribe on YouTube for notifications when it's posted. You can share the archives, which have every episode of Mining the Gold that we've recorded and released up till now. And on Facebook, there's a direct page, www.facebook.com slash mining the gold. On YouTube, you can use bit.ly slash mining the gold podcast YT and you'll come to all of our podcasts. But mining the gold is more than a podcast. It's a book. 190 plus of these short devotional messages that are systematically ordered to help us understand what it is we have when we come to God through Christ Jesus. Mining the Gold has a companion book, Nuggets of Gold, which is the same 190 plus topics in the same order using the same scriptures. But now after a, a quick sent, sentence that explains the, the summary of the verse, you get reflective questions that allow you to ask yourself exactly how well am I appropriating this which Christ is offering to me as he offers me relationship with God the Father. The third book, The Power of Our Relationships, it combines devotional messages with reflections to look at 15 different relationships that we enjoy in this human existence but looking at them from the Bible, you will see the relationship in the Bible, how it was played out, what was positive, what was not so positive. And then we get the reflective questions to ask ourselves how we are developing that specific type of relationship in our own lives. These three books are available. You can use the QR code that's right here next to mining the gold, you can use that QR code to go to bit.ly slash Denise Books, and you will find all three books on one page. Or you can go to amazon.com where you will find those books. My email is dwalkswilson at gmail.com, and I would love to hear from you what you learned, what you liked, what you questioned, what you don't understand, what you don't agree with, some more topics that you'd like us to mine and find the gold in scripture about. I do read all of my emails and I do reply when a reply is warranted. So far, I got a really good track record. But if you will just take a screenshot of this page, and store it away. You'll have the information about the podcast, about me. But today, the most important thing you'll get is the information about Marion Boyd II, whose 
website is marionboyd.intellitravel.com and whose email is explore see the world at gmail.com. Now to the left of his information, you have his QR code that will take you straight to his website. And I venture to say without doubt because of his mindset of customer service, that if you reach out to Marion, you will hear back from him in timely ways. Marion, I just want to thank you for opening our hearts and minds to think of vacation and travel and the benefit we can enjoy and the service you provide to help make vacations a more pleasant experience. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I also want to give a shout out to my grandson, Grayson, who has composed the music for the Mining the Gold podcast. Above all, I want to thank you for investing these moments to be with us, for sharing us with your family and friends through your social media, through other means, and for I hope every day, investing time in mining the gold in God's word, as well as investing time in mining the golden creativity that God has placed in you. <laughs>